So I uh, I was at work and I stopped at McDonald's for lunch. Went inside, grabbed it to go, you know. So I go inside, and the first thing is there's this there's this guy standing in there, and the first thing I hear out of his mouth, he says, "Man, he must have went through the drive thru He said, "Man, you gave me a fucking cheeseburger with no burger." <laughs> <laughs> Right. No cheeseburger, no burger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm supposed to be this this public figure, you know, and so I'm trying to keep my composure, but I'm starting to kind of go <laughs> over the corner, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and this guy says next. He said, uh, or the the manager says. You know, sometimes lines get crossed in communication, and the guy said, it didn't have any fucking meat on it. (laughs) (laughs) That's what she said, yeah. (laughs) So finally, he says, well, uh, we can make you another one. Is that what you wanted, another one? He said, you gave me a fucking grilled cheese with condiments. (laughs) (laughs) Draw your sword, knock your arrows, and ready your spell. It's time for another episode of The Game's what role will you play? Thanks, guys, gals, and guildies. Welcome to episode 96 of The Gamesman. This is the show for the week of Monday, December the 3rd, 2012. I am Steve Conger, also known as Richard Primrose's best unit in XCOM Enemy Unknown, or for others, JSS Lifelike on basically every gaming service imaginable. So we're here to talk some games, and uh, we got a couple of, uh, well, I guess, special guests, honored guests, and one returning. Uh, but first, Mr. Daniel Knappman, Hardly Dan, the staple of the show. Hey, Steve. Hey, Dana. I'm all right. How are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Hopefully good. One more shit today, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I got some stuff from, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the website now. <laughs> That's probably some help. <laughs> no, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I've got, got a new mouse mat and some other stuff coming towards me from F1 Online, the game. Ah, interesting. Interesting. If you like dragging a car around on a string, check that game out. If you like free mouse pads, check that game out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, from the Blast from the Past category, uh, Jeremy Humberson, Zero Wing. Herb my dirt. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, dude? Where have you been? Uh, I've just been dealing with the real life. Not as fun as the video game world at all. (laughs) No. (laughs) I know. It's been crazy for me, too. It's been like 60 hours a week. It just drives me up a wall. I'm at 58 hours a week, really. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. that'll do it. That'll do it. And uh, returning guest requested by multiple, multiple listeners... Brandon Poole, Casino 31. Oh, yeah. Just finished eating the last curly fry. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I feel so great. So what's going on, fellas? How's everybody doing? <laughs> I think we're doing all right, but not as good as you, apparently. Oh, I feel ugh, awesome. <laughs> elated. Elated. A gut full of curly fries. A gut full of curly fries and <laughs> and and some Deer Park water. Yes. Uh, <laughs> had them shits wrapped around your fingers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on, family? I, I hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> like <laughs> like one of them uh, sideshow, like freak show, the fingernail people. <laughs> some nasty shit. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to talk some games. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Brandon, why don't you just go ahead and start? I have really just been playing Halo 4. Ah, interesting. And, and liking it. Now, we had Big Rob on a couple weeks ago, and he was semi-digging it. Um, I'm having a good time uh, with it. Uh, I started on the campaign. Um, Haven't got too far into the campaign, but from what I've been playing, I like it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the graphics 
I, I'm I'm impressed with a with the old ass machine that the Xbox has that can still spit out some wonderful shit like this. Amazed. Yeah, I've been told uh, one of the best of the year. Yeah, uh, probably some of the best lighting I've ever seen in a video game. Honestly. Huh. Yeah, by by far, probably some of the best lighting I've seen. Um, three. You know what? Big shout out to three four three studios. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they really came with it on this one, man. And, uh, you know, and, you know, and, you know, like me, as well as everyone else, everybody was, I, I believe a lot of people were concerned about, you know, Bungie leaving and 343 taking over. But um, they kind of did a better job. Well, that's because there were some Metroid Prime people <laughs> in, in key positions. That's, that's why. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, m- most of what I've been playing, uh, fellas, has been the multiplayer, which is what a lot of people get the game for uh what what are most do i play um i like the swat you, you know i like the uh the really hardcore shit on now what is swat go ahead and explain that because i am completely halo illiterate okay swat is the is is a is more for hardcore uh and uh you only get uh what is it the br rifles okay and uh one shot to the head kills them instantly Ooh. so it is more probably skill based than just spray and pray huh yeah yeah exactly so so you know most most people i think play the team slayer or the slayer games you know you got to you you got to shoot them you know 872.3 million 975,000 that's ridiculous point 27 times <laughs> then throw 82 grenades at them for them to die yeah which I, you know, so, sometimes I'm not really feeling that. I mean, I, I kind of have to be in the mood for that. Yeah. But you know, but but with SWAT, you know, you can't see nobody coming, so you kind of have to, kind of have to look around. You know, you have to keep your you have to keep your eyes open at all times, and sometimes they'll kind of run in front of you and they don't see you, and you just, boom, once they <laughs> love it. So let me ask you this: Have you tried any of the Spartan Ops mode? Not yet, but I will be this weekend. Uh. I heard a lot of good things about it. Haven't played it yet, so I really can't speak on that. That's but the I only thing that really kind of interests me. I think out of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I heard it's it's really awesome, but um, you know, like I said, haven't played it yet. You know, I'm just milking the shit out of this uh, multiplayer right now. So, well, I mean, play it. I mean, I, I guess it's Halo, so there will be people playing for a while. But yeah. uh, you know, play it you while play Halo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I and I completed I completed Assassin's Creed three, two weeks ago. Okay, so do you want me to get into this right now? Oh, uh, here we go. Should we? <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> okay. Steve bought Assassin's Creed three for the PlayStation three on Black Friday for thirty five bucks, which I thought was you know it was a it was a deal that was basically everywhere, but for a game that was only out like three weeks, I was pretty happy. So. I get it back here. I fire it up, and uh, you know, I, I I was actually installing it. Uh, but be, prior to that, a couple of days before, I figured I would conduct a small experiment. Uh, and you know what? This was out of respect for uh, the viewpoint of one Scott McGregor, Mister Rabbit Scotsman, who hates everything past the original Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> If you remember, with the Blu-ray copy of Assassin's Creed Revelations, they packed in a digital copy of the original Assassin's Creed on the PlayStation 3. No trophies, no nothing, right? Yeah. Just a yeah, just a bare naked uh, copy again. Yeah, bare naked copy. Okay. So I played it for a while, and I forgot how much flair and artistic style that first game had with all the glitching and things during the cutscenes where you could hit the X button and it would switch camera views and things like that. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yes. Why did that ever go away? Yeah. Why did that go away? <laughs> hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> sure. Wait, oh, no. I, it, I like the first game, but gameplay wise, after I did the same damn three things in each town, three times over i was like screw this shit i'm done yeah with it. <laughs> <laughs> well see i played i i played the original one on the xbox um i borrowed uh excalibur's copy and you know just kind of ran right through it and didn't do a lot of the extra stuff so i really enjoyed it but assassin's creed 2 uh i think and onward are technically better games mechanically but that first one 
the assassinations were better. And, and by that, I mean, when Altair killed somebody, Altair didn't have that many spoken lines. He was more like a cipher, you know? Yeah. But when he assassinated someone, he would be laying down or, you know, holding them, holding their head as they're laying down. All right. And they would be divulging their secret as any evil mastermind should. That's their plan. They're giving their plan up. Right. Right. But the problem is when you get into Assassin's Creed 2, it never happens. All Ezio does is kill somebody, lays them down in the same position. And he says, Requies got them bache. And he closes their eyes and it's over. You know, it's done. But in this one, and I had forgotten all about this, when the glitches would come up on the screen, you could still hit the button, and it would show that person walking around like a computer program having just a plain discussion with him. Yeah, yeah. That was brilliant, and I don't know why that ever went away. Damn, dude, I forgot all about that. Yes, <laughs> and it's so easy to forget about. Uh, and just as a little side note, my God, facial modeling and stuff, my God, have we come thousands of light years <laughs> <laughs> Since the original Assassin's Creed. I mean, I'm telling you, these models weren't even cast in shadows on the ground. Yeah. It's bad. So I, I, I put in Assassin's Creed 3, which I've been playing in 3D. Oh, nice. Okay. And by the way there, <laughs> a little side note. Don't turn the intensity up to 10 because then it looks like somebody's like, you know, on the Vita, the, the touch screen on the back. It looks like somebody's like pushing up through the back. And the, <laughs> I was looking at the uh, what's what's the chick's name the 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 techie chick in in modern day that's running the uh, the animus. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I can't think of her name. You see, that's another thing about the the game. You know, you don't really you don't really care too much about the character. Yeah, you don't connect too much. I mean, there's only a few that you do. Yeah, just but a couple. You know how her, her her hair is short and cropped, but it's still kind of messy. Those messy pieces are totally like on the flat background, and her head is just like this pushed out round thing. <laughs> <laughs> in 3D, it's pretty bad. But I got to say, the first part of Assassin's Creed 3, which they throw you that twist early on about who you play as and things like that. That whole beginning part, the I guess the, the prologue, it, it, as you would probably refer to it as, until the reveal of the title screen and the vista and the sliding of the character to the left of the screen and everything. It's just, it's framed up so cinematically. And I really, really love like that first hour or two, you know, hour and a half of, of Assassin's Creed three. I really liked it. Yeah. And I like the potential for where it's going, but I know that ultimately they're going to disappoint me because I already have a bunch of fan fiction written in my fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of digging it though so far, and and I'm hoping it looks like it has a chance to be epic. And hearing John Delancey in the opening, you know, playing Desmond's dad, who was Q and the crazy scientist from Quantum Conundrum, hmm. I, I love. I just love his voice. I I hear his voice and I get whisked back to Star Trek: The Next Generation. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> plain and simple. I mean, you know what? To 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 add to that, uh, Steve, it pretty much is the same old hide in the haystack, kill somebody type of shit like the other games. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think I think it's really, I think it's really you supposed to, I, well, for me, you know, I got it more for the story. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and I think, and I think the story is pretty, it's, it's pretty, it's, I mean, I think it's well thought out, but, you know, but like a lot of people's complaining about as far as like the, you know, same old gameplay. And but, I think it is. But but then again, I mean, really, I mean, really, I mean, it's it's the, you know what 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 game isn't to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, I think they've already said that there's going to be another one next year, correct? Oh, have they, Dave? I, I think so. Which I'm yeah, not too excited about that. Yeah, you know that you, you know they're kind of cranking them out. You know, it, you, you know the shit is turning into a Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. I mean, obviously, it it probably doesn't work out this way. But to me. Like after Assassin's Creed 2, what should have happened was each one of those six assassin statues in the tomb of Monteregioni down in the bottom of the estate should, each one of those should have been the next game. Like you should have played as someone else in modern day, another subject that they were training to an ancestor of an Egyptian assassin, right? So then you go through all six of those games and at the end, they all, they all use current day tactics to recover an apple that they find while they're in the animus in the past in the same location. And then they all come together at the end and use all the apples and the sword and the staff in like some huge dais that rewinds the world before the apocalypse and completely saves like the first race. 
You know what I mean? Like that was where it went in my head. And that's why I know I'm ultimately setting myself up for disappointment. Like I always do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then that's the case. You're going to be disappointed. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because the way that now the way that you have it in your head. Yeah, that's awesome. And they can build upon that. You know, I mean, but the way that they have the Assassin's Creed universe, I mean, they can do so many different ways of doing it, man. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I could definitely see them doing something similar to that in the future anyway. Well, I mean, I think that's what everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to see an, an Industrial Revolution assassin, an Egyptian assassin, uh, you know, a Far Eastern assassin, a Russian assassin, like all this stuff. Like, that's the stuff I think that, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just projecting here, but I think that's the things that people want to, want to see. They want to see a NASA space assassin. Space assassin. <laughs> space assassin. <laughs> space assassin. <laughs> space assassin. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Uh, uh, anyway, any any other thoughts on Assassin's Creed Three or no? The well, as far as the ending, I, you know, um, I was kind of like, "What the fuck?" I think a lot. I've heard a lot of people say that, yeah. But you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, it's going to continue. Yeah, well, we kind of figured that. I know that much. Uh, <laughs> you know, and and you know, and I will say this: no, no spoilers on it. But you know, when it happened, I was kind of like, "Meh, okay." Let's keep uh, it going. I don't like that. All right. So okay. Okay. let's kind of transition over to uh, Jeremy. And your GF uh, picked up something new, huh? Yep. She got a, uh, a 3DS. So yeah. I'm playing a little bit of it. <laughs> Which you said that you would, you guys would never get because you thought the Virtual Boy was a better 3D yeah, machine. Yeah, the Virtual Boy had way better 3D. <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute, oh, oh. Jeremy, come on, man! <laughs> I actually have a Virtual Boy. We actually did a comparison of it. Really? You, you still have one? Yeah, yeah, still in the box and everything. I'm <laughs> that, one of those types of people, so <laughs> that that is cool because I, I remember when it came out when I was a kid, I wanted it really bad and and my mom she would not buy it for me so i so i had to go i had to play it on display i remember playing the tennis game the mario tennis game yeah you realize that's what they do for fun like once a month they have a, a they have saturday night seizures basically <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I got my virtual boy like right after it was like canceled like i think it was like toys R us had one for like 40 bucks and i was like oh well yeah, why not that'd be perfect that's that's <laughs> so the longevity price good. there. Nice, but uh, yeah, I've been messing around with that. Uh, you know, it's kind of a DS, but with 3D. It's not something that I'm really looking to purchase now or anything like that. With but, two screens that aren't the same size, that kind of throw you off. Yeah, and the 3D, I don't know. Like sometimes I'll turn it and I'll have it adjusted, and it'll be, you know, it'll look good. And the second I move it just a slight bit, now my eyes have to refocus. Now it's looking all double vision sort of thing. And I don't even see the reason to even turn it on half the time, really. And I, I think there's a lot of people that are with you, but you haven't played Super Mario 3D Land yet. No. Well, she got like this bundle for Black Friday and there's this like Super Monkey Ball and some other stupid games. <laughs> stupid and she, games. She only likes the, uh, like the puzzle games like Professor Layton and like... Uh, scribble knots and stuff like that so i'm probably not going to be able to actually play any good games unless i buy them myself well but she she got it at the perfect time then though yeah so what about demos uh i played the resident evil demo what do you think of it revelations right yeah yeah and yeah it was a it was kind of different it was i'm kind of a lot different i mean the second you killed whatever it was and it's just sort of melted i was like yeah yeah uh, but uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I'm playing it because of the 3D. You know, like I've turned. Yeah. One thing I did like I, everything, meh. But uh, those uh, the classics, uh, Nintendo games in 3D. Yes. Wherever it's called. Yeah. That actually looks pretty flipping awesome. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Too bad that they always uh, remake shitty ones. What? Well, they kind of did with like, what was it? Excite Bike and. Like the same it's good, but I mean, how long are you gonna play it, really? I've played the NES version for a long time. I'm still oh, playing. I forgot who I'm talking to. Yeah, it <laughs> is awesome. Uh, and the top-down shooter games they have on there. I mean, the 
those ones there, the, like the sense of depth, were actually pretty awesome. I like that. Yeah. That was pretty much the only time that I saw it, and I was like, you know, this is actually kind of nifty, like the 3D. Everything else is just like, meh. Well, I mean, as much as I hate to be the guy that's like, hey, go purchase all these one-off Nintendo peripherals, plas- pieces of plastic, uh, if you're going to play any kind of serious game on there, you're going to have to get a Circle Pad Pro. Yay. Yeah, I know. I know. And don't trust them when they say that the battery lasts you 1,800 hours because there's no fucking way that it lasts you that long. Seems like a light design oversight. <laughs> yeah, you in think? In every respect. <laughs> you think? <laughs> and in other hardware news, I got me one of the new Super Slim PS3s. Oh, uh, yeah. I... Yes. Okay, <laughs> now... <sighs> where to start? Where to start? Um, Mine, it's about as... Uh, a little bit bigger than like the uh, the PS2s, the you know slim PS2s. Yeah. Same sort of design going on as the normal PS2s with like the weird grading sort of look. The ridges the- and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. But uh, you know, it's it's lacking all that awesome stuff the fatties had. I, I yeah. like me the fatty. With oh, the- I still got a fatty. I that- miss mine. <laughs> how how? And by the way, how is my old fatty? It uh, well it conked out but i fixed it and it's running again okay all right i'm i miss it tell what i said hi because i really do miss it <laughs> yeah i mean it was one that i like it i really like the the old fat ps3 so do i man it was just uh pretty much every month i had to reflow it it's it and gets so hot holy with the, shit yeah with the black friday deal i was like you know this was kind of what i was limping along to anyway getting a new one at black friday yeah yeah and it was the bundle with the uh, uncharted double pack and the infamous double pack wow well and the design the disc tray it's not the you know sucks in the disc type it's this little slide top yeah uh, it everybody. slides open or something huh it's thin though uh you know everybody uh remember the dreamcast and how it sounded when it was loading yeah it was loud <laughs> Basically, what it sounds like when it's loading. Oh, uh, is it really that loud? It is actually very loud. So the top kind of opens up like like the PS One did. Uh, it's like uh, beside uh, the PlayStation logo. There's like this little. It's not even a button. It's just where the front is kind of raised out a bit, and you can push on it, and the top just sort of mechanically slides along the top or, or the side if you're standing it, you know, the other way, but. The top just sort of slides sideways, and then you can pop the disc down just like a normal, like old GameCube or whatever. Pop the disc down, and then you have to manually slide it back over and close it. Is it junky? Uh, like the slide piece is it? Is it like a junky slide piece or no? It. it I mean, when you push the button, it feels kind of nice. Whenever it's just sort of like it's this nice sort of slow slide. Yeah, yeah. But when you're met, like I honestly don't. I thankfully I don't really play too many disc-based games, because I, I can see it getting worn out after a while. It is kind of chintzy feeling. Okay. Okay. I just wondered about the build quality of the thing overall. I mean, are you satisfied with it for the money? For the money, yeah. I mean, it was 200 bucks with the games and a couple, like, vouchers and stuff like that. That's pretty good. Did you get any more PlayStation Plus with it, PlayStation Plus with it too? Yep, you get, like, uh, three months PlayStation Plus. Oh, cool. And cool. the Uncharted. And, uh... Uncharted, I played the third one that you gave me. With yes. The yeah. And, I mean, that game still looks great. I enjoy the multiplayer in that game a lot. Yeah, and it's it, fun. Uh, going back and playing Arch- Uncharted 1, wow, how far that game came. It's sort of like what you're saying about Assassin's Creed, like the, the from the third one to the first one. Like, the first one, the characters have this, like, glossy sort of not shadowed. Yeah, they do. Yeah. The, were kind of not very good looking, even in like the cutscenes. And in the third one, everything's just like super textured. You can see little, you know, scratches on Nathan's face and stuff like that. And like mechanically, it's like a complete different game from the third one, too. Yeah, like yeah, it is. Back people's grenades when they throw them at you, so you just have to run wildly trying to get away <laughs> from it. <laughs> oh, I used to hate that. I love that game. I really did. But and you know what was funny about the, the time when the original Uncharted was out? It looked better than any game out there running in 720p than these other games looked in 1080p. But like with with MSAA and you know the anti-aliasing running and all that stuff, it was gorgeous in 720. Yeah, like 
you can see like the edges of everything just like super smooth and crisp and just yeah. I don't know how they did it, but wow. And Infamous, I only played a little bit of that. Of the first one, I figured I'd start with that one. And wow, I don't know. It's probably really not my type of game. It really threw me off the right at the beginning though, because you're running around and the, first, the whole first part of the game, you don't actually get to like run at a full sprint, and you're running at this half sprint where it looks like Cole is like he just took a dump, and he really. <laughs> <laughs> We have to do like the squeeze cheek crab walk to find some more. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the weirdest looking thing. <laughs> I think you'll we'll have more fun with the second one. I, yeah. I did, and and I think because uh, it's because it's because it's a little different the way it looks. And I think uh, some of the guys from Naughty Dog helped help those guys out with the second one. And you can tell it's oh, big time hey, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a big time difference. So, well, you, you, I mean, you may have fun with the with the second one more than the first one. But you know. see, it's it's crazy because the first game I went back and played the first game after I finished the second one, yeah. and the first game seems like a bad like game loft ripoff of <laughs> of, of Infamous Two. I mean, it it's almost like a caricature of itself. Yeah, it's it's like, like a fr- freeware uh, game of yeah, it's like yeah ripoff, yeah. I went back and I was like, "Oh, how did I even play this?" But then I, but I loved it. <laughs> it was great. Well, it's one of those things I wanted to do. I wanted to go in order through them all. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah it's uh, hard to do for a lot of people. Game. I think you'll be fine. I think I'm just going to try and grind through the story. Just you know, plunge right through, get it done. Don't do any extraneous shit. Yeah. I, yeah, I hated playing Mass Effect One just because of the controls. Yeah. That, God, that, I love that. That, that shit just. Hmm. You know, I mean, the, it was. <laughs> Great story. I you know I can't I can't front, but I had to watch that shit on YouTube to really, because I just couldn't play it, man. I just couldn't like. Oh, I love that game. I, I couldn't play it, but well, I wanted to play it. It's supposed to be coming to PSN this week. I think. Did I see that right? I don't know. I didn't. Like digitally, I think, or something. It really? Yeah, there was a story on N4G that said Mass Effect One, and I was like, wait a minute, wait. Huh. So there, I don't know. There must have been some kind of deal. I don't know. Well, you know, I might, I might try it again. I mean, I might try it again. You know what? I need a PC. That <laughs> game was an it was a an RPG ass RPG. Yeah, the first one I did enjoy. Yeah. Well, aside yeah. from the completionist in me, kind of ruined it because every planet I went down on and driving that little dune buggy, I had to. I literally just went up and down the map, <laughs> moving slightly over, make sure I got everything so I never had to come back again. <laughs> Leave the Mako alone. <laughs> I, was in, I was in a damn city of it. Eight years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it took me, I think, boy. ten God. hours to get off that stupid thing because I yeah. talked to everyone. Yeah, I talked to everybody too, man. I was the same. I was like, I'm not missing out shit. I got to find out what's going on. That's because it was an RPG. Yeah, and you know, and I love, and I miss that. I wish, I wish they had the gameplay mechanics of two. Yeah. Combined with RPG elements of one. That would have been the shit. Dan, what are you uh, what are you up to, sir? Dan, I guess more Guild Wars. Yeah, yeah, I've been back into some more Guild Wars. We have got a couple of new Guild members, so I've been playing with them. Uh, it's been good fun. 
So, post emotional Walking Dead the video game roller coaster. <laughs> uh, back into Guild Wars 2, huh? Yeah, yeah, a, a bit of Lego Lord of the Rings 2. I've been playing. Yeah, that. how's that going? Um, it's it's kind of fun. It's nice, you know, easy pick up, put down, play it for you know half an hour, two hours, and then get back to Guild Wars. How does it hold up uh, to the other LEGO games? I've never really played the other LEGO games other than the demos. So I, I'm not really one to say. But, uh, you know, it's very cute. A lot of fun. Uh, I've got some great screenshots on Steam uh, Steam at the moment. Yeah, I'm having a blast playing it. It's real I was, good fun. <laughs> I was screenshotting the shit out of LEGO Batman 2 when we were playing <laughs> it. She was like, why do you need to play with the keyboard on your lap? <laughs> Well, see, that's the great thing now. If you've got it on big picture mode and you're using a 360 controller, if you press the middle button and the right trigger at the same time, that does a screenshot for you. Yep. Oh, shit. You just changed my world. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding that trigger the whole time I'm playing. All right. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I need to go back and redo a few of the missions where I didn't get true adventure. Well, so let me tell you that I played the Lego Lord of the Rings demo, um, obviously on PC a couple weeks ago. Well, I decided to download the one on the 3DS. And I played it, and it's basically the same. It's the whole Nazgul thing, you know, the same uh, thing that uh, you saw, I guess, on the like the giant bomb quick look and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it was basically the same game, as far as I saw. Except for the fact of the Y button, which is the attack button. Mm. It doesn't always register when you press it. Yeesh. That's not helpful. I don't know if that's just the demo or not, uh, but I would end up taking a hit because I didn't have my sword out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, cute, huh? Yeah, that's that's not good. I was, I'm actually quite surprised at the kind of RPG elements to it that are in there. You can you know, craft your own weapons and stuff Items, like that. Yeah, so a lot, kind of there's a lot more uh, combining of uh of like in game like real time items too yeah you know? yeah like cooking what are they there was that stew pot that you put a fish and an apple and an egg in or something like that yeah something like that yeah and you just make up the uh... there's one bit that's a bit bit annoying because obviously it's using a lot of the audio from the from the films it sounds like they haven't maybe got the best kind of copy of the audio now and then it's kind of a bit hissy oh really and, yeah not the balances aren't always quite right so that's that's a bit kind of jarring when that happens interesting interesting but, uh, that could just be because i'm playing it with my headphones on all the time because <laughs> the speakers yeah. on my tv are crap in comparison tinny yeah yeah um yeah it's a lot of fun. i don't think i'd pay full price so if you if you're thinking about getting it you know check out a steam sale or see if you can get it cheap somewhere i, I don't think it's actually a full retail price game anyway but uh i think i picked it up for about 18 pounds. Uh, I, I was comfortable with that, but any more I'd have been a bit, yeah, it's too yeah. much. That's not too bad, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah for, for, for the money, it's great fun. Yeah. But uh, not as I'm not as addicted to that as Guild Wars 2. <laughs> <laughs> Color me surprised, Dan. Color me surprised. You guys, yeah. man, you guys got me wanting to play it. I know. It is pretty awesome, I have to say. <laughs> great fun. You know, you every, gotta... <laughs> shit. every time I listen to the games, man, like y'all talk about this shit all the time. I'm like, man, I got to get on this, man, I got to get on this hype train, man. Y'all, man, y'all, y'all like y'all talking about awesome stuff, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. I want. <laughs> <laughs> I got six hundred dollars. I could be a buy a PC, or I could wrap every one of my fingers with curly fries <laughs> for a year. That's for a year. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm going to rob a bank. Oh, don't do that. No, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, okay. just, just get a PC store. <laughs> just rob <Yeah>. one of them. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I get my dog to rob a bank, so I won't. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> get your dog a credit card. It'd be easier. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually delivered them before. It's like Fido Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I told this one guy one time, I said, man, I delivered a credit card for to a dog one time. He said, a dog? I said, yeah. He said, a credit card? Like, he couldn't even wrap his head around it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah. I've actually seen those before, though. Yeah. But, uh, 
Well, as far as me, uh, just kind of bat and clean up here, uh, I did get a chance to also download on the 3DS the Epic Mickey Power of Illusion demo, which is the semi-sequel to Castle of Illusion, the uh, ever-popular Genesis title. Mm. One of my favorite Sega Genesis titles, actually. Yes, yeah, it's and it was great. on this, sir. This is absolutely not that great. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's pretty bad, man. Um, first off, I mean, it looks like that, which I don't have a problem with. You know, I'm fine with retro and indie looks and, you know, and, and aesthetics like that. Yeah. The problem with this is the controls are fucking terrible. Okay. There is like when, when you get to a point, there's a, a gap that you need to traverse. And the way to do it is you have to use your paint to paint a platform across to, to get there. Right. But in order to do that, you have to touch or, or like run over to, toward this, this thing. You have to, I think, flip the screen to the bottom, touch the place that you want to paint, then flip it back to the top. And then while it's touched, it's, you have to use the stylus or your finger to outline like a Mickey Mouse head with paint and then like fill it in. And then it paints it. It is the most clunky, ridiculous mechanic I think I've ever seen in a 3DS like two, two, uh, 2D platformer. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, and it's the same thing with the thinner. Like, if there's something there that you need to get rid of, you have to kind of do go through the same process and, you know, and outline it and then scrub in the middle to fill it in. And it's just, it is not fun. But, I mean, obviously, it's made to coincide with the release of Epic Mickey 2, so all the cutscenes are kind of the same. They're like that flat charcoal paper-looking sort of style, um, which I like. But uh, this game's just not good. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not good. <laughs> if if the demo's any indication, let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, right before I got on with you, Knuckleheads, I tried out the DMC demo, Devil May Cry. Yes. Oh, cool. This is what I want to hear about, yes. Do tell. Okay. So I was never a big Devil May Cry fan back in the day. Really? I think I might be a Devil May Cry fan now. Really? Maybe. Well, uh, Ninja Theory, yeah, I like I like those guys. Well, you know, I have a huge erection for Enslaved. I always have since it came out a couple of years back. I have an erection for uh, what was the PS3 game? Damn it, Heavenly Sword. Heavenly Sword, yes. Oh, that's oh, that is my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. I love uh, Heavenly yeah. Sword. That game yeah. was awesome. Yeah. That, wasn't it? Wasn't it awesome? Great story. Like the yeah, the, the story was amazing. Cut the story. Shit. The gameplay was pretty awesome. There are some moments where like, I didn't really like the uh, like the aftertouch sort of thing. I it was never, yeah, I, I don't know. I never really couldn't use that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, that game. Wow, it sucked me in. I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Why yeah. is there not a sequel to this? Yeah. Thank you. Th- I, you know what? You know, yeah. I love you, Jeremy. <laughs> so you pick up right where uh, uh, Kai, you know, is now has the heavenly sword and just run with that. Because at the end of the game, she seems to be not as crazy. You know, Kai throughout the whole game was just like completely batshit insane, yeah, almost. Yeah. Like, you know, like that weird disjointed, like. And at the end of the game, it seemed like uh, as she was doing her little monologue, that you know, now she's actually kind of normal. Yeah. What well, a- if you guys like that and you didn't play Enslaved, you owe it to yourself. That, to me, I think is one of the most character-rich games uh, on, on the, well, I guess not just the PlayStation 3 because it's on the Xbox 2, I guess, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, I, I played Enslaved, man, and I couldn't get into it, bro. Really? I re- Honestly. Oh, I loved it. I just thought that... To, I mean, well let, well, let me not say I couldn't get... Because I played it for a while, and I just... I just stopped. Wow. I was like, I'm done here. I, I don't know. Maybe I was going through a bad time in my life. I don't know. I think so, because the characterizations are so good. It, uh, it, you know? It, now, yeah, now, it was like like the actual, like the the relationship between the guy and Mon- the girl. Monkey and Trip, yeah. M- yeah. Monkey and Trip. Yeah, man, it, it, was, it, was, it was great to watch that and, you know, and them – you know, partner up together and go through the levels together like that. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. I don't know what. I don't know what. I just couldn't finish it, man. I think maybe you need to give it another try. I, maybe I am. I am. I am because I, I still have it. So probably, you know, probably around the holidays. I'm probably in a lull. Maybe the beginning of January or something. You know? Yeah. 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 Maybe January. But the the DMC demo. 
on the first load when I loaded it the first time, no audio. <laughs> like I said before, indicative of the final product, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Yeah. Um, so I quit out back to the cross media bar, uh, started the game again. The game almost looks like parts of it are running sub 30 frames per second, like maybe 28 or something like that. Like it's dipping below 30 just a little bit. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, but there are certain times where it just kind of looks odd and I don't know how to explain it. Maybe the frame rate is part of it. And I, I don't think that it's anything that would ever deter you from buying nor playing the game because when you're in the action and you need the frame rate, it's fine. But it's it's kind of Devil May Cry with an attitude. You know, the, I, Devil May Cry always had an attitude. Yeah, but it, it has a different one, it's man. kind of an emo attitude, but it was there. It, it's slightly. He doesn't look as emo as he used to. Uh, I think they kind of took the uh, the darkness away from his eyes and things like that. But, you know, he still has the trench coat and, uh, it, it's great when you go into the, uh, you know, what's, what's the, what's the Super Saiyan sort of, uh, mode? What's it called? No, no, I don't even remember. I don't remember either. But whenever you go into that powerful mode, when you click both of the sticks in, yeah, his trench coat turns red and his hair turns white and he looks like the Dante of old. Oh, uh, awesome. He said, yeah, Super Sensei. Super, super, <laughs> super Saiyan mode, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I never even watched Dragon Ball, but I had a buddy that watched it like a motherfucker, and it's the only reason I know that. But oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's what so, they all say. That's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you like God of War, if you like button mashy, if you like combo, if you like, and actually, it's really not that button mashy unless you want it to be. There is a lot of uh, technical proficiency involved with getting some you know, some high digit combos. Really? I think. Well, proficiency that I don't have, oh. but <laughs> you know, because I'm old. But I, I kind of like it. I like the way it looks. I, I, I like it a lot. I, I are interested. You know what? You have me interested because I really wasn't checking for the game like that. To be honest with you, when when they first announced it, I'm like, Meh. yeah, you well, need to you need to check it out. I definitely will check out the demo this weekend, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. We want to do some tweets. We got a we got a few in. Uh, one from Fell the Troll from at Common Troll uh, on Twitter, and he says simply "cake or death," and <laughs> that's the question. And he says, "I'll help. We're all out of cake." <laughs> I'm just watching a little Eddie Izzard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but how about this? Um, indifference on Twitter. He says thoughts on the Wii Mini. And PC gamers <clears throat> pretending that price is somehow a non-factor when disparaging console games. <laughs> Wii Mini first. Anybody read about the Wii Mini? Yeah, I uh, read about it. Well, uh, well I, I haven't heard anything about this Wii Mini. What, what, what is this? Okay, uh, who wants to take it? It's a tiny Wii that only plays Wii games, right? No internet, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's just a little bit. bare so. bones, just play Wii games, and that's about it. Fuck that. Oh, it looks horrible as well. It kind of reminds me, if you remember those old um, Game & Watch Nintendos, the Donkey Kong the clamshell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a closed one of them. Oh. That kind so of this shape. It's like a handheld. So this is a no, handheld. no, no. It's just the box. The, that's what it kind of looks like. It's just this. It's an actual co- Wii console, yeah. Yeah, it's just oh, this okay. rectangular slab that's got a red band around it. Now, the 360 is actually doing something like that, too, next year. Um, um, I was talking to Steve about this. The old 360 mini, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're actually doing something similar to that, where it's a, where it's just a, uh, like a, like a Microsoft box, and that's it's more for the casual gamer. Well, you know, it's going to have internet and stuff. I mean, that, that's I think the, the the crux of the argument with this thing is is no internet capability, no GameCube backward compatibility, nothing. It is just a Wii box. With obviously, I mean, I guess it has to have a sensor bar unless that thing's built into the to the box and you set it in front of your TV, which I doubt. Why would anybody want to get that then? I could only come up with one reason, and I was grasping at straws, man. <laughs> uh, you, you live in an RV and you live on the road. I mean, I, I don't. 
I don't know. Nope, that, that is <laughs> sales of three. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I said that's sales of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can get a Wii now. Like, people are selling the Wii. I mean, you can get one for, like, not even 100 bucks now. Well, I mean, a new one's 129 right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and... <laughs> And this one's in Canada, obviously. Uh, yeah, ninety nine dollars, ninety nine bucks. Uh, but I think the the bigger question here is, are they stopping production of the original Wii? I mean, uh-huh. I, mean I mean, it seems like everybody already has one. I mean, they want it. They 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 want the uh, the battle of the of the generation of consoles, so to speak. So pretty much a lot of people have one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. the The only thing I can see is is that. It'll come to the rest of the world eventually. Either that, or there was some kind of super secret lawsuit patent kind of thing that was maybe averted in Canada. Maybe it's geared towards third world countries. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Right? And what it has like a it has a bug zapper on the back of it to keep flies from ice skating on your eyeball and shit. <laughs> Exactly. Now you from Zimbabwe can play with me. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, no, but no, 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 but but we are hungry. No, fuck that. You play the Wii now. <laughs> <laughs> brand new for your area of the world, get your brand new Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty fucking bad, huh? <laughs> All right. All right. So, <laughs> but apparently, it does ship with the sensor bar and a red Wii Motion Wii Plus, Plus control, so, controller, yeah. and a red nunchuck. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, I can't figure out what the real world practicality is, but I mean, I guess that's neither here nor there. So um, we got another tweet in from Shannon Reifenberg, S. Reifenberg on Twitter uh, from over at Nintendo Dash Oki. And he says, opinions on the new hum- Humble Bundle. Now the THQ is supplying the games. They have already raised two million in only one day. What the heck? Uh, is it a uh, Humble Bundle? Like, I thought the Humble Bundle was all about the indie thing. Well, yeah. apparently not. Maybe the Humble Bundle is about trying to get some bastards some money that don't have any. Yeah. Or they're going through some hard times. Well, apparently a lot of it's going to charity. Oh, well, that's good. And the games in there, some pretty nice games in that collection. But I, I kind of, you know, still think I'd rather help the indies out rather than. Yeah. Well, so I bought I bought it the other night. Oh, yeah. Um, I I paid six dollars. It was over the average of five seventy two or whatever, right? Hmm. So if you pay over the average. Not only do you get Dark Siders, which I already had, Metro 2033, which is what I really wanted it for, mm. uh, Red Faction Armageddon, uh, Company of Heroes plus the expansions, you also get, for paying over the average, Saints Row the Third. Yeah. And all the soundtracks to, to all of them. For $6? Are you kidding me? Damn it, why don't I have $6? <laughs> so I split it up, right? I split it up, uh, two, two, and two. So I paid two to the, two to Humble. Two to charity, which was, I guess, split between Child's Play and American Red Cross, and two to THQ, because THQ needs some money, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they do. But right now, it says 524,610 bundles sold already. Jeez. Now, how much? Uh, I'm not entirely positive. Okay, total payments right now. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now as well. <laughs> Two million nine hundred and seventy five thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and climbing. Wow. Yeah. So average purchase five dollars and sixty seven cents. So So you so so you get this on Steam and you pay the price that you want and, and it supports the uh cha- charity of your choice. You get to yeah. choose the charity? Uh no. I you, there's a there's a slider once you purchase and you can slide between uh, b- between the what oh, you want. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and what's kind of cool is they give you it's one. Cool. How they have it set up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really neat. They give you one, one Steam code to activate that activates all four of those games plus the expansions, and then one separate code for Saints Row. Cool. That's and cool. you just plug those in to uh, to Steam, and you're done. Now, and, now, now, I have a question. Have any of you fellas played Metro Twenty Thirty Three? How is that? If you've played it. I haven't, and I want to. I don't. I have not either. Yeah, it's one I've, of those I've, games I keep eyeing up because ever it's supposed to be, you know, very, very pretty, and uh, it's one of those things I wanted to get just to crank it up, see how my uh, graphics card can 
push it, but <laughs> oh, never got around to it. So I kind of wanted to save the other half of Indifference's tweet for this. So when he says that price is somehow a non-factor when disparaging console games, right? Mm. So this blew up on Twitter, and there was a bunch of back and forth between like eight people. <laughs> <laughs> it did, did. It turned into a virtual shitstorm um, about, you know, what's the better way to go? To pay three four $400 for a console and pay $60 for games or $1,300 for a kick-ass PC, which if you really wanted to, you could whittle that down to about six or 700 bucks. Mm. Yeah, that's... A lot of people have this image from like late nineties of a gaming PC being like fifteen hundred. I mean, with the price, even with, you can get sixteen gigs of RAM off Newegg right now for thirty bucks. I know sixteen yeah. gigs of DDR three RAM. Yeah, I mean, it's really not what it used to be. You can make a great gaming PC yeah. six hundred bucks, and my girlfriend got a. Uh, it's like this little crappy compact or whatever but it has like this amd fusion and it's dual core it has like the dual core 1.6 gigahertz processor with like an integrated radeon 6300 series the spec wise you think it, that's not that great but actually it can run a lot of games just with that little 400 hundred dollar pc mm. it's actually quite surprising yeah i mean i picked up my pc uh got it from a friend of mine for 200 pounds yeah uh four years ago and now it's you know getting long in a tooth, um, but of course new consoles are going to be coming out soon. I'm going to spend less than half, what, well about half, what a new console is going to cost to upgrade my rig, and it's going to the games are going to be cheaper. They're going to look just as good, if not better. I'm probably <laughs> better. Let's yeah yeah yeah. Let's yeah. go ahead and say that because you know. Well, and that's what I've been telling Brandon is he's probably better off to spend six hundred dollars on like a walmart box of like an hp or something and then buy a 150 fifty dollar video card and you'll probably i mean more than likely you'll be able to run anything out there yeah yeah and the truth of the matter is it's really not that hard to replace parts as and when you need to no even yeah. down to like but, the processor and the motherboard it's it's easier than lego you can't put stuff in the wrong place but my argument is is this here fellas it's like i hear a lot of gamers you know complain about you know prices and shit like that okay look look motherfuckers first of all gaming is very is, is an expensive hobby for one yes so yeah. you already know that so why even have this argument yeah i mean yeah. I, I i would be lying if i didn't say that i am a little stinging in the ass from paying 60 dollars for super for scribble knots unlimited on the wii u when i could have bought it for 30 on the pc now, now, now that is now that's a valid argument. Yeah. But you know, but you know, because because you've been gaming for years, you know, since since you were a kid, you know, you you already know the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's, it's just how it is. It's how plus, it's an expensive ass hobby. And plus, some people do crazy shit for large games. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Because, know. You know, because the hype factor behind it is like, yeah. oh, Scribble Nuts got to get that shit, motherfucker. Yeah. I love, <laughs> they I just, love Squirrel Nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I want to um, pin a uh, pizza penis and, and a picture <laughs> of a, a penis covered in pizza. Pop the damn screen and shit. I don't think I tried that before, but I'm definitely gonna try it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Text me. Text me. See what you come up with. <laughs> oh my god, that's awful. Pizza penis, yeah. Uh, I don't want to see a penis with a tiny little piece of pepperoni on the tip because I probably ain't. Pe- no, nah, never mind. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, and there we go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> you know what they could do? Uh, with, you could buy a fifteen hundred dollar PC, gaming PC, and then just pirate all your games. There, problem solved. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah don't no. The the Gamesman <laughs> podcast does not endorse <laughs> any. Yeah. But but I but I will say this I I think that PC gamers uh, have a better idea of what's what's going on. Well, and there is an elitism uh, sort of mentality to it too. I mean, damn right. I, <laughs> <let's see. laughs> There's also a huge more variation in the type of games that you tend to come across as a PC gamer. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that's the Steam storefront gives you. There's loads of stuff on there. I'm kind of like, oh, I've never really played it. You know game like that or you know there's there's so many things you don't generally see on consoles like when yeah. was the last great space sim yeah you know yeah. trading and fighting I just, on a uh, posted 
tweet, uh, tweeted about that top-down racer that's on uh, Steam Greenlight now. When was the last time you played something like that? Man, yeah. that was like 16-bit era. Now, here's <laughs> my ignorance with, with the whole PC gaming thing. It's like, when I hear of PC gaming, fellas, okay, what I think of automatically is like, Okay, I got to use a fucking mouse and keyboard, and I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> no, the days uh, of that are over, yeah, but, uh, unless you want them to be. Right, right, exactly. And you know, and I keep forgetting that you know a lot of guys now are using their you know PS3 and Xbox 360 controllers and everything. And yeah, well, yeah, more I know so, someone that uses a 360 but, controller to play Guild Wars too. Yeah, I I do that. <laughs> yeah, you son of a bitch, you got to share that with me. <laughs> I can, I'll set you up with that later because it's okay. A, the game is made for a controller. I'm telling. I you. know. I can already tell. But uh, already now tell. with uh, Steam, the big screen mode in Steam, now you can use your controller to browse Steam, buy games, talk yep. to your friends. Basically, Xbox Live, you know, on PC now. Yeah. Without the subs, Lots of games come out of it. Everything. All right, fellas. Well, thank you uh, for joining me on this sort of, uh, I guess this was kind of like a lightning round show, wasn't it? Like a million topics a minute. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Sorry, that was kind of my fault, probably. I think I kind of liked it. <laughs> I think I kind of liked it. Kind of like It's shaking bacon. I help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why don't we do some shout outs? Uh, Brandon, how about you? Shout out to everybody in the world. <laughs> Shout out to my curly fries. Shout out to my dog. Shout out to <laughs> Shout out to Dan, Jeremy, Steve. Everybody. Shout out to Diane McKnight. And, and yeah, and sh- shout out to sh- shout out to T Dog, man. You know, rest in peace. <laughs> shout, shout out to T Dog, man. For real. So. I, I told Brandon not too long ago on the uh, night <laughs> on the casinos corner that will never be heard because Brandon has a racist PC that doesn't like to produce shows with white people on it. Yeah, all, all of my white friends when I record a podcast that shit fucks up. I don't know what <laughs> is racist. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, sorry. So I told him that uh, me and my buddy Jr. We were growing up, you know, playing Resident Evil. Uh, <laughs> In the beginning of Resident Evil 2, when you go into the Raccoon Police Department, there is that one brother sitting there with leaning against the wall, all tore up, right? <laughs> so, you know, from that point on, what we started calling the, the, the black man that dies in the beginning of a movie or a game or something like that, you know what we started calling him? Diane McKnight. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, totally, every time I say Diane McKnight, I think about him because he looks at he looks up at Leon and he says something like, "Heck of a first day." Oh. <laughs> 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 it's so good. Oh man, oh, that's, that, so that's, good. that's some funny. No, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And McKnight, you know, you know, big big shout out to all the brothers out there that have died within the first three minutes of a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, too many to count. Hey, too many to count. But no, big no. But seriously though, uh, shout out to the games, man. Yeah, Each yeah. podcast. Y'all got five shows left. Fuck that, man. Y'all need to do more, man. Fuck that. Yeah, there, there's less than that. I think it's only four. Yeah, well, including this one. Now it's only four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I well well I got to be on another show before before is the the last hurrah. You know what? Speaking of, I think I want people to uh, go onto Skype and add J S S L I F E L I K E on Skype uh, because I don't know what you guys think. Maybe we could maybe just do a game of the year category and spend the rest of the live show talking to people, like bringing people in that you know listeners that want to come on and talk a little bit, you know, for the for the final live show that we do. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like fun. So, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Jeremy, shout out. Uh, shout out to all of you guys. I've enjoyed being back on the show. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to say shout out to Sega because I'm feeling Skies of Arcade HD is fucking right around the corner here very so- shortly, uh-huh. and that game is the best RPG ever. It's pretty good. Mm. Pretty good? It would come on. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it's like the best. And I, I'm really liking their HD remakes. Uh, the earlier ones, eh, like Crazy Taxi and stuff like that, they got rid of all the cool music and no, not even controller support on PC. 
which was just ridiculous playing something like that with a keyboard. But uh, Jack on Radio HD, amazing. Yeah. Shenmue HD, uh, they've been teasing it, and Skies of Arcade HD. I mean, right there. I'm still not going to buy any new Sonic games, but hey, Sega, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and after that diatribe, Mr. Dan. <laughs> yeah, just a quickie. Uh, a couple of new <laughs> guild members. For I say hello to so that's uh, Dash Andy, I guess, uh, point six five two seven and Ron dot nineteen seventy five. Uh, the two new guild members. Great playing with you guys. Hope to see some more in Guild Wars two. Yeah, maybe I should get on there and meet you. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Cool. see what we've been spending those IP points on. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. All right, so uh, for me, uh, I don't have too much this week. Um, I don't know if, thank you, Amazon, for getting me my fucking Black Friday game in, in a timely manner, I guess. Uh, and VGHub.net, great wealth of gaming content over at VGHub.net. So, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Dan, Web for the Week come, where are you going to be? Um, as ever, hardly down on Twitter, and pretty much hardly down on Steam, and... Um, is it hardly Dan point four two one nine? Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. I think that's yeah. it. Yeah, I'll probably be there. Do you even have to ask? Yeah, well, I, I can never remember it. I know because I don't have to look for it. it logs <laughs> in, you know. <laughs> it's like remembering my own telephone number. I'm crap at that. <laughs> I never call it. <laughs> yeah, it's that's ridiculous. It. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, Zerim Wing, pretty much everywhere. Z e i r a m. Probably this week going to be PlayStation Three. Uh, I think it's. Still same, Zerum Wang. Uh, hit me up if I can get the old uh, PS3 to spit out my Uncharted 3. We can play some uh, multiplayer, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, casino. Casino. Uh, hit me up, peoples, on Twitter. Casino31. Now, that's Casino with a K. So, that's K-A-S-I-N-O. Yes, I spell it retarded because that's what I am, retarded. Uh, ca- that's not you know, nice. What? <laughs> that ain't nice. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah, man, that ain't nice, man. Come on, now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But, um, yeah, where was I? Uh, PS3. Check me out. Uh, Casino72. Yes, I have different names for everything. Fuck y'all. <laughs> um, because people keep t- taking my name. Xbox. You can find me at just my first initial and last name, B Pool. B is in boy, P is in Paul, O O L E. And y'all hit me up on Xbox 360, man, because I-, I wanna I wanna play some Halo 4 with some cool people. There you so, go. What's up? I- I'll let you I- I'll let you play ya. <laughs> be cool with be pool um, <laughs> and for me I am JSS L-I-F-E L-I-K-E pretty much everywhere that's uh, Nintendo Network that's PSN that's Xbox Live that's Steam that's Skype that's Twitter that's yeah and uh, like I alluded to in the beginning of the show I am uh, Skull Duggerer's best heavy unit on his game of XCOM Skull Duggerer's that's an awesome yeah. that's awesome to yeah. say yeah, yeah. So uh, if, if if I don't go, he don't win. So <laughs> <laughs> bang. <laughs> All right, Dan, you want to pay the bills? Yeah, sure. As ever, check out our Facebook page. Hit that like button. If you do, we'll read your name out. And uh, we've got one new like this week. It's uh, Malcolm Horn. So cheers. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy hearing me read your name. <laughs> <laughs> We could do some more voicemails. We haven't had one for ages now. Um, so get on the phone, call the RPG hotline at 412-267-RPG1. That's 412-267-RPG1. Yeah. Um, if you're overseas and can't afford the Skype credit or whatever, uh, email us. The email address is thegamesmanrpg at gmail.com. You can also tweet us on our Twitter account, which is at thegamesmanrpg. We've got a couple of new followers this week. We've got Jake underscore VGS and Just Bousy. Uh, B-A-U-S-S-I-E or just be Ilzy perhaps yeah that that makes more sense (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, don't forget you can also check out our shows on the YouTube channel Uh, our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash the gamesman RPG we've only got four shows left after listening to this one so you better hurry up because you're running out of time 
So what do you think? Next week, uh, I think we're going to have C.P. Matthew on. What do you think? Uh, three word associations for the last half of the year or what? Yeah, it could be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, well, Jeremy, I got to say it was great to uh, get a chance to talk with you again uh, yeah. on on the old tubes. And uh, Brandon, as always, great to have you on. Um, you know, you bring a, bring such a unique uh, <laughs> sort of fucked up energy to the show. <laughs> so uh, it is. I'm sorry. I apologize. But you know, as always, I love being on. Man, I love you. I love I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you all. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So that is going to do it on behalf of Hardly Dan, on behalf of Casino 31, on behalf of Zero Wing. I am Lifelike. We are the Gamesmen. And until episode 97, we ask, what what role role will you play? play? You have an email address, Brandon. You gave it to me before. I can't remember. Yeah. Um. Hold on. <laughs> curly fries at motherfucker.com. Some motherfucking curly fries, man. No. Um. <laughs> I've caught up with all of Walking Dead. So did you see the dude? Did, no, wait, Jeremy, yes. Dan, yeah. did you guys watch the... I'm caught up with uh, last week, yeah. Okay, and Dan, you're not watching any of them, and this isn't going to be it's a spoiler. This is like uh, a token moment. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Look, look, when, when, when old boy said what he said, I automatically remembered... What you said, like, yep, they got a new token, and I said, <laughs> I will be god dang, man. <laughs> That's the best part of it. The best part is, he picked up a pair of house shoes. Yeah, the house is a fucking house slippers and said, oh, <laughs> shit. That's what I'm talking about. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, no fucking house slippers, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you, missed, you missed out on the best part. The best part was right after that, when Daryl looks at him and he says, "What, uh, brother wants to relax at the end of the day?" <laughs> <laughs> brother got to relax at the end of the day. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> All the stereotypes in your face. <laughs> <laughs> satisfied with this podcast, please return any portion for a full refund. So you can run and tell that, homeboy. <laughs>